mujer que quiero tiene que ser corazón, fuego y escuela, con la piel tostada como una flor de Venezuela. To begin. Venezuela is a federal republic located on the northern coast of South America. It is bordered by Colombia on the west, Brazil on the south, Guyana on the east, and the Caribbean island in the north, and the islands of Trinidad and Tobago to the northeast. During the history of Venezuela, the country has been recognized for being rich in oil, sugar, and minerals. With all these commodities and a favorable location, one would think that Venezuela is a great country to live in. However, that is not the reality of the Venezuela of the 21st century. Many issues are currently developing in the country. The causes go beyond just economy, security, terrorism, misuse of resources, lack of a law system, and an illegitimate government. Nevertheless, this is not the focus of my research. My question seeks to look at a more specific issue as a result of the many issues that are currently present in the country. With a million of atrocities taking place in Venezuela, people feel the necessity to immigrate and look for a better life in other countries. But when talking about immigration, who gets to leave the country? The answer to that is that people who are monetarily capable of starting a new life in other countries with the amount of money that they might have in a savings account. So what is one of the professions that allows for a stable income? Yes, as some of you may have thought, medicine and health-related professions. As a result of Venezuelan instability, doctors and healthcare professionals are fleeing the country. After I made this observation, I came up with the questions, why are Venezuelan healthcare providers such as doctors or nurses fleeing the country? And how is that impacting Venezuela as a whole? The Bolivarian diaspora refers to the voluntary immigration of millions of Venezuelans from their native country during the presidency of Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro due to the establishment of the Bolivarian Revolution. Initially, upper-class Venezuelans and scholars immigrated during Chavez's tenure, though middle- and lower-class Venezuelans began to live as conditions worsened in the country. Venezuelans were often asked in polls if they desired to leave their native country. In December 2015, over 30% of Venezuelans were planning to permanently leave Venezuela. This number nearly doubled a month later in September 2016, with 57% of Venezuelans wanting to leave the country, according to Datin Corp. As far as college graduates go, in a study titled Venezuelan Community Abroad, A New Method of Exile by Tomas Paez, Mercedes Vives, and Juan Rafael Polido of the Central University of Venezuela, of more than 1.5 million Venezuelans who had left the country following the Bolivarian Revolution, more than 90% of those who left were college graduates, with 40% holding a master's degree and 12% having a doctorate and postdoctorate. The study used official verification of data from outside of Venezuela and surveys from hundreds of former Venezuelans. So what are the main reasons as to why medical professionals are fleeing the country? Low pay and lack of recognition cause physicians and medical staff, especially from private facilities, to immigrate from the country following the Venezuelan government's opposition to the traditional six-year program and instead supports Cuban authorities in training community medical doctors. The Venezuelan government allegedly restricted facilities and funding for physician training, which has led to the closing of multiple medical programs. In April 2015, President of the Venezuelan Federation of medicine, Douglas Leon Natera, is stated that more than 13,000 doctors, amounting to over 50% in the country, had immigrated from Venezuela, saying that the shortage of doctors had been created and affected both public and private hospitals. Douglas Leon Natera has also said that there is no way to replace them because the competition, which is the best way to access a position, were eliminated by the Venezuelan government. According to official figures, to date would have graduated all over the country a total of 18,759 integral doctors trained in different educational institutions managed by the state. This training program was created in 2005 through the signing of an agreement between the government of the then President of the Republic Hugo Chavez and Cuban President Fidel Castro under the so-called Sandino Commitment. According to the explanation given by the union leader, the escape of the doctors is mainly due to the lack of opportunities and recognition of their work, low salaries, 
poor social security, poor quality life, and a shortage of labor inputs are the main problems that affect the performance of these professionals. Even when Venezuela's healthcare sector had already been struggling with medical supply shortages and funding gaps at hospitals, last year's steep drop in the global price of crude oil, Venezuela's primary source of income, cut the already shrinking budget for medical supplies and hospital expenses, prompting more healthcare professionals to leave. The budget for healthcare has diminished significantly, said Dr. Host Antonio Cisneros, a physician from Venezuela who has been practicing in the United States for more than 20 years. As a result, he continued, there are fewer resources to import technology and bring in drugs that are necessary to keep up the quality of care. The economic crisis has already taken its toll in the health sector in extreme ways. Some hospitals reportedly began performing more mixectomies in recent months to treat breast cancer because they were unable to get reliable access to radiation machines. Venezuelans unable to get access to prescription drugs have also turned to social media to batter for medications. Last year, Venezuela also saw the resurgence of diseases that had long been eradicated. Malaria resurfaced for the first time in 50 years, and dengue fever costs arose nearly 50% in 2014 from the year before. The chikungunya virus, a similar mosquito-transmitted disease, also began spreading through the country. Some of the frustration in the medical community stems from the beginning of Hugo Chavez's presidency, when his government pioneered a social program known as Barrio Adentro, designed to bring healthcare access to poor communities. It was popular among the poor, but also created a parallel system for medical training that critics say is much weaker than the traditional medical education university and graduate schools. Overall, This program did not grant much for the population as most of the doctors working in the social programs were Cuban doctors. Since Hugo Chavez first took over in 1999, Venezuela has mostly relied on workers from Cuba, which at some point numbered 100,000 in country, including doctors and nurses, to manage its healthcare system. However, that decades-long experiment has largely failed, so much so that the government needs to ask the UN for help. More than half of Cuban man CDI first response centers located mostly in Venezuela's worth slums have been closed and the Cuban doctors fled Venezuela for better lives in other countries. Yes, even Cubans have left. But the question is, where are these doctors going? The United States is one of the main destinations for Venezuelan doctors. Between the years 2000 and 2010, the number of individuals living in the U.S. who identified as a Venezuelan doctor grew 36%. According to the researcher Carlos Ubero, the vast majority of Venezuelan doctors trying to migrate enter the country with a non-immigrant tourist or business visa. According to the Latin American and Caribbean Economic System in 2007, the percentage of Venezuelan doctors 25 years and older in the United States that earned a PhD was 14%, higher than the 9% of Americans having a PhD. Most of them accumulated in Florida. Other countries such as Chile, Peru, Colombia, Haiti, have had an increase of Venezuelan doctors living in their territories. As evidence, the following graph portrays evidence of the numbers of Chilean visas given to Venezuelans in 2016, adding up to 22,902 and about 1,250 taking Chile's medical license exam in 2016, about 750 more test takers than the previous year. Having many doctors fleeing the country is leaving Venezuela in a system with poor health. Data from previous years places Venezuela's healthcare spending in the lowest position with only 1.6% of Venezuela's GDP. Overall, Venezuela does not see a prompt solution for the lack of doctors. But is there a solution for these professional immigrants? Isabel Barradas, 48 years old, has been a doctor for 25 years. In her native Venezuela, she was an orthopedic surgeon and head of a hospital department with expertise in physical rehabilitation. She speaks three languages and, since marrying an American and moving to South Florida more than a decade ago, is a U.S. citizen. Barradas passed her U.S. medical licensing exams with flying colors, but she did not get a residency position in the specialty she loves. Orthopedic surgery, she says, forget it. In this country, that is so elite. Competition for the training positions required for medical licensure is fierce, and most go to seniors at U.S. medical schools. Barradas decided that a position she did get, internal medicine in Buffalo, New York, wasn't worth leaving her family in Miami for. 
thousands of foreign educated doctors living in the U.S. would like to practice medicine here but don't have the time, money, or language skills to compete for and complete a residency. Miami's Florida International University offers other options, accelerated programs leading to a bachelor's and master's of science in nursing which train foreign educated doctors to be nurse practitioners. FIU's programs both give internationally educated professionals an outlet for their skills and helps add a diversity to the healthcare workforce. Isabel Barradas and Mariana Luque train and credentialed physicians in their native Venezuela and Colombia, respectively, are nursing students at Florida International University. The program compresses six years of education into four, mostly by moving quickly through undergraduate material. For the past few years, their graduation rate has been close to 100%. Even when there seems to be a solution for these professionals that have left Venezuela, the country itself is not getting rid of such a disaster anytime soon. In conclusion, the only thing that would allow for Venezuela to bring back their great medical institution would be an unlikely new beginning, one in which the whole system, not only the medical, is restored. A new government needs to be elected. The quality of medical education needs to become better. Hospitals and clinics need to be better equipped. A higher amount of Venezuela's GDP has to be invested in health care, and the competition for medical position has to be brought back. As a result of the enhancement of the health system in Venezuela, new and better doctors will be formed, and many of the ones who fled might likely come back to practice medicine in the country that taught them the skills that they have today. Llevo tu luz y tu aroma en mi piel y el cuatro en mi corazón. Llevo en mi sangre la espuma del mar y tu horizonte en mi sol. 